I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hi everyone, you're watching the Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 5. I'm Johnny D, and I am with my partner Benoit, aka Nostradamus. Ben, how's you going today, my friend? Fine, and you? Yes, I'm going super great. And you know what? Uh, no. For the Season 5, yeah. we have another guest, and uh, I'm talking about none other than a former WWE star. Okay. Uh, he's also a former uh, AAA uh, talent and also a TNA star. I'm talking about uh, Kizarni, a.k.a. Uh, Sinbodi, and is uh, preparing a, a, is, uh, a coffee right now. So as you go in, my friend, today. Yeah, hey, what's Good. Up? How are you guys? Yes, oh, we're going super great. And... Good. When I saw Sinbodi, it's been a while. I remember one thing. I met you 25 uh, years ago. It was in um, Saint Frédéric de Beauce. And I remember a young guy at this time, of course. Yeah. Uh, very, with... very, very good looking fellow. And, uh, and I've only gotten better with age. Yeah, yeah. You looks great for your age, my friend. And I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> and I remember uh, the weather was around 40 degrees. And I saw in the corner backstage a big guy with a long blonde hair with a big red uh, hairy trench coat. Yeah. And I am, God, this, this guy is insane with the it, it was so hot in here and he he worked with with that that was so distinguished you know and after that i'm falling in love with the persona that was just amazing that we can discuss uh, all together about your career because you have a big background and we have uh, some interesting question uh, for the wrestling rock star. So the first question, go oh, on, yeah, my I'll friend. start uh, the interview. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Sin, uh, who inspired you to become a pro wrestler? Um, I would have to say Jake the Snake Roberts. Okay. Uh, when I was a little kid, I, the, my first glimpse of wrestling was Hulk Hogan versus Roddy Piper. Yeah. Okay. And then soon after, soon after, uh, um, you know, when Jake the Snake DDT'd Ricky Steamboat on the concrete, excuse me, yeah. then uh, I was I was watching it on the couch as a little kid, trying to stay up late to watch Saturday's main event with, with uh, Edge and Christian. We were all little kids together in, in Orangeville, Ontario, Canada. And um, and I remember uh, Edge and Christian were really upset and worried about Ricky Steamboat. And I just remember thinking, I don't want to be the guy on the concrete. I want to be the guy giving the DDT. <laughs> and my, my mind was always like captivated by him ever since. And then uh, uh, fast forward, we became opponents, uh, Jake and I, then we became, you know, like a mentor and friends. And he's, he's like, he's the older brother I never had, you know. And uh, we remember uh, that you were trained by uh, Rob Fuego, if my memory is good. Uh... I, was trained, I was trained by Ron Hutchinson. My basic, my basic training was, from Ron Hutchinson okay. at, Sully, at Sully's gym. Okay. And uh, and then uh, I left. Uh, I kind of left the nest soon after. Okay. And then uh, I was mentored by Jake the Snake. And okay. then um, and I, I'm sorry, uh, my this interview is gonna you're gonna hear chickens clucking and you're gonna hear dogs <laughs> barking and no problem. So I'm here on my my funny farm. <laughs> it's totally natural. No problem. Know? No problem. Yeah. Hey, you leave that kitty alone. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Bonjour, Monsieur Cher. <laughs> Como se va? Yeah. I see you, bro. I see you. He's like, I want to eat that cat. You can't eat that cat. <laughs> that cat will kick your ass. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I had my basics training by Ron Hutchinson at Sully's gym. And then I left the nest. And then uh, uh, not too, too long after that, um, uh, I wrestled with Jake the Snake in the UK. Okay. And then uh, then I wrestled him again in Canada. And we sort of buddied up there. And he invited me to, to Fort Lauderdale where he was living. And he, he thought that uh, uh, Vince McMahon would, uh, would like what I had to offer. And he said, let's, let's kind of just fine tune you. You know, you're still new and let's fine tune you. And, uh, so that's what he did. And then, um, then eventually I went to OVW and I got some yep. more training with Rip Rogers and Al Snow. And then I went to OVW, uh, I went to uh, FCW, got more training with, uh, Dr. Tom and Dusty Rhodes and Steve Kern. And, uh, and yeah, so those are, those are basically my trainer. So, you know, so you'd have to be, you'd have to be a fool or, or an idiot to not learn something from all those guys. Okay. Okay, uh, as a Canadian wrestler, which federation in Canada holds your best memories? Uh, both Apocalypse Wrestling Federation, because that's where I, I broke in with, with Ron. And then uh, in, in, in the Maritimes, my, my, my heart okay. is, is in the Maritimes, you know, uh, wrestling with, with uh, you know, big Brody Steele, Kingman, and, yeah. and Cowboy Mike Hughes, and, uh, uh, no class Bobby Bass, and There is big guy uh, over Buddy here. Buddy Lane and all those guys. Yeah, those big guys. Those are all big, big, big guys. Um, and doing some of those summer tours uh, across uh, the Maritimes, you know, was some of the, the funnest times. And uh, the brotherhood in that locker room was amazing. And, and the talent was amazing. Where you could have switched anybody, you know, it was like an old school locker room where there was more like there was always like eight to 12 guys. And you could have switched any of those guys to be a tag team or a main event or the opener or the middle of the show. Yeah. Like it was a great card you know between and where the guys are versatile that's that's perfect so yeah yeah and they were all they all like i mean like i, I i'm half new, new school half old school you know like i appreciate the progression but i also appreciate the history you know and i think if you don't know if you don't know where you've been you don't know where you are and you don't know where you're going so yes exactly so if you can take it all together and mix it together so there was it was a wonderful locker room full of like new guys medium guys old school guys And um, after that, uh, you, um, I remember in 2004, um, WWE signed you to a wrestling development contract as Kizarni. After a couple of appearances, WWE... Uh, 2007. It was, it was 2007. Okay, okay. Sorry, 2007. WWE released you. Uh, why uh, did WWE release you? You don't know? Okay. Still don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, and you're, you're talking about... I got, I, got, I got always, like, good reviews from the, the coaches and the producers, yeah. like Ricky Steamboat, um, IRS, uh, Arn Anderson, mm -hmm. uh, Dean Malenko, all those guys were my producers, um, and they were always very happy and, and everything, so... And I imagine... Uh, Budget, now... politics, who, who knows? Yeah, and exactly. Aliens, who knows? If you were not with the right person and you don't talk with the right person, blah, blah, blah. So, and you were young at this era. So, uh, that, uh, if, uh, to still the, am young, you will sign a, a contract that probably, uh, very different, you know. Um, uh, af um, well, at, that, at that stage, at that stage of the game, I was so, and I mean, I, I love, I love wrestling. I always have, I always will. But at that stage of the game, I was, I think I was naive and, And, and enamored and you know you just wanted to see the best at everything you didn't realize sometimes people maybe didn't have your best interest at heart so clever enough to see that now but i certainly wasn't back then so it's, it's, uh, it's, i can't i can't shirk the responsibility like it as i'm a big boy i'll make my bed and sleep in it you know but it's my decisions but and do you think your current sin body uh, gimmick is an improvement uh on kizarni Uh, I think it's just the natural evolution. Like Kizarni was like visually Kizarni was me, but the name wasn't me speaking. Carney wasn't me. Uh, how they wanted me to work. Wasn't me, you know, I, but I was just trying to play ball, trying to be a good, good team player. Uh, and even to this day, Jake, the snake will sort of bark at me and say like, mm -hmm. 
you know, it didn't work because you weren't being you. You were trying to make other people happy. Like he goes, every time you you use your own creativity, you always do a good job. You know, so, yeah, because so. uh, between you and me, uh, Benoit is a gene. He is a genius uh, oh, yeah. uh, in terms of creativity. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to sound. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a bitter guy. I, I you know, I, I owe wrestling everything. It owes me nothing. You know, um, but. I think like when you're when you're being so out of the box, you know, you're being so yeah. different. It confuses yeah. a lot of people, and it confuses even people that are smart, you know. And then if if you're if they can't wrap their head around you, then you know, like That's when right. when uh, Raven Ra when Raven was first in not as Scotty uh, uh, Flamengo or, or Scotty the Body or any of that, but when when he was in WWE as Raven. Like before mm -hmm. ECW and all that, like when he was like, you yeah. know, they just didn't know what to like. He was just ahead of his time and didn't know what was they did. They didn't know what to to make of him, you know. And they certainly, I'm sure, you know, uh, tried to hear his ideas, but I don't think they were. They kind of maybe fell on deaf ears. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they just felt on on ears that just didn't understand him, you know. But he's a great wrestler and a, you know, the good, you know, not. I don't like the word character because mm -hmm. it's, we're not characters. Like we are us, you know, like, you know, Mark Hamill plays Luke Skywalker, uh, <laughs> but, but, but Rob yeah. Zombie is Rob Zombie or Roddy exactly. Piper is Roddy Piper, you know, right. like Pee Wee Herman is kind of sort of, you know, kind of Pee Wee Herman, you know, he's not, <laughs> he's not just, it's not just Paul Rubens, not just Pee Wee Herman. It's, it's exactly. kind of a mash together where it's just not, you know, an actor playing a, a character like the, Exactly. What's his face yeah. playing Iron Man or something? Like you know, it's 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 it, it becomes you. You become it. Exactly. Exactly. Mr. Bean is Mr. Bean. You <laughs> there can, you go. Exactly. You can the, the difference between may, the may actor we... and Mr. And Mr. Bean. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like so I, I I remember having some people say I like your character I like your gimmick and I remember thinking like what gimmick like this is me this is still exactly me you know so. <laughs> Okay, uh, me and Jonathan uh, read uh, some rumor about you. Uh, uh, is it true uh, that WWE didn't sign you back then because you didn't have natural blonde hair? No, no. Like, just a rumor. Yeah, I've, never, I've never heard that ever. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just a rumor. That's funny because uh, I remember a few years ago. I've never, I've never heard that ever. No. Oh, oh interesting. <clears throat> now I am. A, now I'm a natural blonde. <laughs> but when I when I when I, when I put the cap, the clown paint on you, I don't think I'm like I think I'm like like the band Kiss. Like when you put the paint on, you can't tell if I'm 20 or 80. You know. Yeah. So, and and to be to be honest, again, not to not to sound like a a, a jerk or anything, but like at, at my age, I can I can go just as hard as any 25 year old. So I think like because I, there's there's plenty of guys that are in you know technically better shape than me, but I'm in working shape and I have this. And you can't yeah. substitute wisdom. So I mean, like the other night, I was doing a show against a six foot four, twenty-five uh, year old wrestler, and he was ready to puke on himself, and I wasn't even breathing hard. You know, he's like, "Hold on, hold on, I, I can't breathe." I'm like, what? Shut up. You know. So it just. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. It is what it is, but, but it is I'm not. Is. Uh, true or for false? Your relationship. Uh, with uh, the cap uh, would have caused the end of your contract with WWE Universe. Is I that true or not? That's not. That is not true. Okay. Um, oh, I was already released. That's a rumor. Okay. Yeah, we met after I was released. Okay. Um, it might not have, may or may not have helped me returning, uh, mm -hmm. but it didn't have anything to do with me being released. Okay. Perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, in the early two uh, thousands, uh, how did you get uh, recruited by uh, TNA Wrestling? By TNA Wrestling, uh, yeah. Scott Demore uh, was uh, one of the bookers at TNA, and he uh, ran and runs uh, Border City Wrestling in Windsor, Ontario. Oh, okay. And that was one of the first. That was the very first place out of Ron Hutchinson's school that I worked. And I remember when I when I did that, uh, Ron got really mad at me because he was sort of in that at that time he was in that old school mindset of you know you're going to work work for me until i allow you to work other places 
and I was just ambitious and hungry. So instead of, I, I only had a handful of matches as Sin, I was just brand new. And so I said, okay, Sin, Sin will not wrestle uh, anywhere else yet. And then, so I, I changed my name. I, I called myself Lucifer Love. <laughs> and then I wrestled, I wrestled for Demore and Ron found out and got really, really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh but yeah so scott was the the, the guy that gave me my break and, and uh, he brought he was the one that brought me to uh tna and, and about tna are you satisfied uh, with your feud with raven and the gathering in tna i was i was very proud of all that i was still quite uh quite new i was only like three years into the business so uh I had plenty of, I and mean, we were still always out. Like I'm always learning. We all have plenty to learn all the time, but I was only like, you know, fresh out of the womb, three years of wrestling was nothing, you know? So like these days I hear guys and I say, how, how, how long have you been wrestling? And they're like, two years, five years, 10 years. I'm like, whoa, you know, <laughs> and really, but when they're wrestling once or twice a weekend, maybe if they're lucky, If you do the math on that, you know, like, you know, six months of wrestling, you know, once or twice a weekend, that's really, you know, two or three, you know, it's like two months uh, in the territory days where you're wrestling every day, twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday. So, so I think you know, the years are not uh, a good way to gauge how, how experienced you are these days, like maybe more of who trained you, how many matches, who have you wrestled, you know, these kind of things. But at that stage of the game, I was still, still pretty pretty new um but uh i was very proud of, of what we did as the new church and i was still i was still green but i mean i had i had experienced partners that were really kind and, and took care of me like wolfie d slash and jim mitchell and shane douglas that was a stack stable you know yeah and so they 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 schooled me and, and protected me and helped me and kid cash guys like that mm -hmm. um really really helped me out and uh, really showed me the ropes Awesome. Yeah, I was I was very proud of that, and I mean, I wish it was longer, and uh, you know, but you know, everything you know, everything happens, and how it goes, and it's how it goes. Uh, but weirdly, over the years, the two biggest questions that I would get consistently, all over, whether I was wrestling in the states or Europe, Canada or Mexico or wherever, the two biggest questions I would always get is when is the new church going to tag? Like, when are we ever going to see the new church somewhere? Because we we only did. Besides TNA, I think we only did like two or three indie appearances ever, ever. Like we have not, um, we've not ever since since mm -hmm. that whole early time. And the the, uh, I think, a couple of those times were like right around when we were at TNA, and oh. then the last, and then years and years and years and years and years later, um, at uh, the Ric Flair's last match, uh, produced by. Conrad Thompson and uh, and so forth, like Starcast. And, uh, Conrad and uh, and Road Dog had booked booked us both yeah. in in, uh, in the bunkhouse battle royal. So like uh, Wolfie D Slash and I were both uh, wrestlers on that show, and we were producers backstage. So we helped produce and we okay. performed as well. And I was kind of telling Conrad, I'm like, I don't know if you realize, uh, but. Uh, you're responsible for re reuniting the new church after mm -hmm. so many years, you know, and, and he was just like, yeah, he goes, that's awesome. He goes, I'm super happy to have you guys here. Nice, relax. Hey, <laughs> hey, papi, tranquilo, bro. Um, so, yeah, and, and like, I, I think uh, really, if I think, if I, I, could, I could actually literally count four times, two little times on indie shows, like right when we were still um, at TNA, Okay. And then we did one of those one night only pay-per-views for TNA, you know, and maybe 2013 or 14 or whatever it was. It was just, anyway, and I remember that was, was really cool because we weren't even in our, in our outfits yet. And me and Wolfie and Jim Mitchell walked through catering and we were just in like board shorts and flip flops, you know, and all <laughs> the guys just kind of in the catering just kind of stopped as we walked in, like, like it was like cowboys walking into a saloon, you know, and they all kind of stopped and they looked at us and we were like, what? And they're like, Some of the guys even laugh, laugh. Like even I remember Crowbar laughing. He goes, he goes. Even in you guys, even in in flip flops, you guys together, you guys look scary. You know. <laughs> oh, really, really, really. 
and uh and so there was that there was that one that one night only pay-per-view and then years later uh like at the rick flair's last match we we were there and we didn't come out together but we were in that battle royal together and we kind of giggled and we were thinking should we should we fight each other should we help each other out you know but we end up looking at each other we just kind of was like you know like we're in the ring together bro so that was really cool Okay. Uh, recently, you have been invited to be a WWE coach at the Performance Center. Mm -hmm. Can you consider this accomplishment one of the most significant achievements of your uh, wrestling career? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was definitely an honor and a privilege to be a part-time, like a guest coach there. So I've uh, been there quite a few times and hopefully quite a few more. We'll see. We'll mm -hmm. see what uh, what life has in store. Uh, but yeah, it's, I mean, if, if, if you're a pro wrestler, then being at the performance center is like being a little kid inside Toys R Us, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Really? There's it's, seven uh, ring and, uh, uh, gym, uh, inside the, the building. That was just amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's spectacular. And it just, it's a place that creates magic and to be, to be a magician in that magic store is pretty amazing. Pretty wonderful. Yeah great opportunity and it's a good and it's a it's a nice accolade it's a nice validation to know that they trust you you're you're skilled enough that they trust you to teach their their talent mm -hmm. you know yeah and uh for our pre-closing uh, pre segment i give you a name in a few words tell me something about them all right okay. so the first ever uh, the first one is jake the snake roberts master of psychology and a very mm -hmm. very good big brother Joe E. Legend. Uh, Joe helped uh, break me in, and he is—he uh, was another uh, big brother that really was very pivotal to me when I when I started out. A great guy, a funny, funny, talented, nice, nice yeah. uh, hu husband and father. Very good guy. Uh, the Boogeyman. Boogeyman. <laughs> uh, one of my one of my good friends. Um, uh, very respectful, and and, uh, and uh, I, lo I love his. Uh, his persona. I don't want to say gimmick. I don't want to say character because again, like, like me, like that's very much him, you know, that's, that's probably a perfect yeah. fit for yeah, a tag team. <laughs> I, you know what? I was the, I was his only tag team partner ever in his only tag match ever. We tagged for uh Rikishi show in California. Okay. Really? Um, yeah. At the uh, territory leagues at Knox pro. And uh, we were It was it was his only tag team match ever, and I was my mind was kind of like, what do you mean it's your only tag match ever? And he would just say, Briz, it just never came up, you know. <laughs> so okay, so yeah, and I, the I think one. I'm the only guy that has ever tagged with him, and I'm the only guy that has ever uh, gotten a victory over him uh, on, on the, the indie shows. So and he, I'm very proud to be his friend. And did you heat? Uh, he hits very worms? hard. He hits very hard, and those worms really? taste disgusting. I've, <laughs> I've, 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 had, I've had I've had a worm dinner uh, more than one time wrestling the boogie. <laughs> many many proteins. <laughs> oh, <is this> so? <laughs> lots and lots of protein, no fat, no carbs, but tastes like shit. <laughs> and the last one, Sin Bodhi, yourself, yourself. Just like the Joker would say, laughing on the outside, crying on the inside. You know, when your when your brain thinks the way my brain thinks, mm -hmm. every day is is chaos and a storm. So you got to harness that and be positive and and give back to your industry. So I so some days when I feel good, okay, and then some days when I feel like a diva and I feel angry about you know anything, you know, wrestling mm -hmm. or life or anything. I just always kind of grip my teeth and kind of get get back on the horse. Always, I never, I never cry. I might sell when nobody's looking, and then I get always get back on the horse. Awesome. It's yet 25 uh, minutes. Uh, of and I will say, I will say that this I will, I will to to describe me too. It's just, this is more yes. uh, this is funnier. Cool. That uh, I remember Jake the Snake. Uh, my yeah. biggest compliment, like uh, uh, like my. You know, you you said about being at the at the performance center was one of my best accolades. Mm -hmm. My best, my number one accolade was having my friend and my mentor and my brother, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, tell me I was the most creative man that he has ever met, and he said I was ahead of my time. And I, I said thank you, and I said I think that's 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 a, 
uh, code for I'm going to die poor. And he said, that's right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, just uh, before ending, um, th thank you so much for your 25 uh, generous minutes uh, for this interview. No problem. And uh, a few years, I remember you made the decision to create your custom professional wrestling figures for fans, wrestling, and uh, others. Uh, could you tell us um, about uh, this hobby? Yeah, I... Uh... I started it when we were all uh, forced to stay home during the pandemic lockdowns mm -hmm. and uh, just to keep myself busy and sane. You know, I'm again, I'm an artsy fartsy guy. So whether I was drawing or sculpting or tattooing or video mm -hmm. editing or Photoshop, you know, painting, I do all sorts of art. And so uh, I had collected these old, those old, the rubber LJN wrestlers from when I was a kid and I had, some that were nice and then i had some that were all like beat up and crappy so i started just playing with it and i would sculpt them and you know kind of play mr potato head i would you know chop the arms and move things and make them different and mm -hmm. like like almost like customizing a car you know exactly. and then uh, eventually i learned how to like cast and mold figures and then i i went to the 3d sculpting and now pretty much pretty much everything i do pretty much is head to toe like 3d sculpted mm -hmm. and so so that hobby kind of turned into a little bit of a side hustle, especially when during the pandemic, you know, we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't perform. So I have to feed my family, you know? So if I couldn't be in the wrestling ring, then uh, people would ask to, to buy the, like I just show them online and people would say, Hey, can I buy that? Like, okay. Yeah, sure. And so then it kind of became a hobby turned side hustle. And, uh, and so now I, you know, I sell a lot of ones for mostly what I sell is like for indie guys that, okay. had, that, never, that never had a, an action figure made. So mm -hmm. I'll get like a lot of indie guys saying, Hey, could you make me or I'll get like wives or husbands or something or boyfriends, girlfriends or somebody like that mm -hmm. saying, Hey, could you make one for my husband or for my wife as a surprise? And so a lot of times like, it's a birthday present, Christmas present and stuff like that. But yeah, if you want, if you, if anybody listening that wants one, uh, it's, I'm happy to do it. And it doesn't have to be a wrestler. It, you can be whatever, but okay. But yeah, just, just find me on my social media, it, it's, uh, yeah, my Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram. It's all the same. It's all Sinbodhi, S-I-N-N-B-O-D-H-I. Just send right. me a message and I'm happy to take care of you. And if you want to support a very good wrestler, uh, go to ProWrestlingTees.com and tap Sinbodhi. You will see more than 30 different Sinbodhi shirts. And if you want uh, a very custom uh, quality wrestling figure for you or your own gimmick, as uh, Sin said, or for um, wrestling legend, uh, yes, for a wrestling legend, just contact uh, Sin Booty on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as usual, um, my partner Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the French prophet, you know, and he will try to predict the future of our guests. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, Sin, uh, thank you so much for the interview. It was Mer an honor, a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, Merci. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I predict... Hey, Donata. Oh, that's the wrong. That's not... <laughs> oh, uh, what did you say? Donata. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, seriously, I predict to you uh, probably a, a reunion with the new church uh, in a few months in an indie show. I would love it. Why not? Why not? I, I would love with it. The, uh, the new uh, TNA uh, wrestling promotion. Oh, I mean, that's a, a perfect fit for this kind yeah. of uh, of prediction. Well, that's that's where that's where the new church was born. So, with that, the name was actually made uh, created by Jeff Jarrett. Oh, yeah, he was the booker okay. and the owner. Uh... He was the booker and the owner at the time, but he came up with the name. Okay. Like well, Wolfie D, he uh, he was Slash, and I was Sin, you know, and Father Mitchell, Jim Mitchell was him, and so. Jeff had the foresight to, so I was, I was the newest member. Like there was other guys before me, like Brian Lee and stuff like that. But okay. Jeff was the one that put that group together. Gave it its name. So, uh, thank you so much uh, for the interview. Uh, you're watching the wrestle rock podcast season five. We were with Sinbodi, the warlord of weird himself. Thank you so much for the interview. It was a pleasure and pleasure and honor, and we wish you all the best for your uh, future project. 
and uh, take care, my friend. Merci. Au revoir, mon frère. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.